สู่งานโทเกนซัมมิต2017อย่างเป็นทางการนะคะดิฉันเจี๊ยบประวินุษวิศวะพรบุตรเป็นซีเนียร์คอนซัลแทนต์ของเมนทิสไทยแลนด์ก็รับหน้าที่พิธีกรคู่กับคุณแอนดรูในวันนี้นะคะก็สำหรับการแสดงที่จบไปแล้วนั้นสักครู่นี้นะคะชื่อชุด power of สยามจากทีม KOB ซึ่งย่อมาจาก King of Brothers ก็ซึ่งเป็นผู้เข้าประกวดจากรายการ Thailand Got Talent ค่ะซีซั่น6ที่ผ่านมานี้เองค่ะก็สำหรับฟอรัมในวันนี้ก็บรรยากาศสบายๆนะคะก็ถึงจะสบายๆแต่ก็สาระความรู้อัดแน่นมากมายทั้งช่วงเช้าและช่วงบ่ายซึ่งก็จะเป็น discussion panel จากสปิเกอร์ของเราค่ะก็สำหรับช่วงนี้ที่ฉันขอเชิญคุณแอนดรูรับหน้าที่พิธีกรส่งมอบไม้ให้คุณแอนดรูค่ะขอบคุณค่ะ Thank you JJ Good morning everybody and welcome um, delighted to be here with you all today uh, my name's Andrew Andrew Salisbury and I'm a director with Mentis um, just like to thank the performers that has just provided us with that wonderful show. They were contestants on Thailand's Got Talent recently, and they have just performed the power of Siam for us. So thank you very much, gentlemen. They've just exited at the back. Um, it's my pleasure this morning to introduce the official welcome for us um, and introduce my very good friend and colleague, Richard, Richard Brady, who is the CEO of Mentis. Richard started his career in 1990 and is recognized as one of the leading international experts in the use and interpretation of personality profiling. I've had the honor of knowing Richard since 2009 and Richard has led the international expansion of Mentis which now covers three continents and with our main local offices in London, Dubai, Sharjah and of course Bangkok. So very pleased to welcome to the stage Richard Brady. I have a big booty. <laughs> like you, Gahab. I 
think that was intended for me. Good morning, everyone. Saudi Club, Yindi Club, and uh, welcome, welcome indeed to our event. I'm very honoured to uh, welcome you to the Hogan Summit by Mentis uh, 2017, and thank you for that kind introduction to uh, from Kunjiap and from Andrew, my colleagues at Mentis. Um, Today is a very special event. In many ways, we see this as the relaunch of Hogan in the Kingdom of Thailand. Uh, some of you uh, joined in, in the audience uh, know Hogan well. You've been using the system for several years. And for some of you, this is the first time you will have heard of the system. And our guest of honor, indeed, has some challenging points and questions about how we can make sure this product is successful in Thailand. I want to spend perhaps 10 minutes setting a context and setting the scenery. And how do I follow a start like the one that we've just had? Hard to do. I hope you're all awake now and uh, ready for the show. Um, some of the things that I'd like to, us to consider alluded to uh, weight already. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a lifelong challenge for me. So talent, what is talent? What's the definition of talent? Today you're going to hear lots of different perspectives, uh, lots of definitions from different experts. And I've put together a panel of experts for you coming from industry and coming from a academia, coming from uh, the professional setting, exploring personality in the workplace. But if we go back to the origins of talent, um, from a classical sense, uh, one talent is your weight in gold. So a talent to the Romans and to the Greeks and to, uh, in, in ancient uh, uh, history, was the weight of one person in gold. So this morning, actually, I need to correct this figure because it's now 87 kilograms. It's gone up a little bit. But, you know, when I wrote the slide, 84 kilograms of gold is worth $3.4 million at today's prices. Um, these methods of, of uh, exchange, of uh, the transfer of wealth, are changing. Show of hands for the audience, first audience participation. Does anyone own any Bitcoin? Put your hands up if you own any Bitcoin. Thank you, Lewis. I thought I predicted it might. Any over here? Yeah, I thought you might have some as well. Yes, okay. So is this real? Are we predicting that in five or ten years' time, the show of hands will be much higher than that? Well, I own some Bitcoin, and it was a difficult, challenging process to get to that point. However, the world, the pace of change is, is dramatic. And in terms of currency, human currency, human capital, that's what today is all about, the search for talent. It's not about weighing people and exchanging money uh, on that basis. It's about finding talent to lead your enterprises into the future. A number of the presenters today are psychologists. I, um, I carry that burden of being a psychologist. My first visit to Thailand was in 1990. Um, so that's 27, nearly 28 years ago. Um, I never imagined I'd be allowed to come and live and to work in the Kingdom of Thailand. It's a great blessing, it's a great honor, um, it's a great opportunity. But how much has changed in those 27 years? Think, think if you are, last weekend was my birthday. I'm 50 now, so we stopped counting. But um, at the age of 50, when I entered the workplace, there were no computers. There was no internet. I'm one, you know, we needed an expression for people who predate computers or predate the internet. Um, and now it controls our lives. Your phone is perhaps even in your hand. You're, you're attending to what's going on on your phone and what's in front of you. In terms of talent, for the future, what do we need to consider? And today is intended to be thought-provoking and, and also disruptive, um, to make us consider what the future holds. Artificial intelligence, uh, the role of technology, not just technology, but information in talent. So we are approaching a fourth industrial age. And I, and some, some of you in the audience as friends, as colleagues, 
You know, you'll feel firmly planted in the third industrial revolution when personal computers came into, into play. Well, now the world is changing. And uh, the changes that we predict, um, I'm the type of person, I'm quite neurotic. To be a good psychologist, you need to be neurotic. Don't believe what Thomas says to you. Um, we worry about the present, we worry about the future. My concern is, what is the future of employment? What is the future of management and leadership? Will machines take over many of the roles that human beings do today? Worth considering, worth thinking about. And this will impact Thailand, this will impact the region. It already is. A lot of my clients in the automotive industry expecting dramatic labor, uh, labor force reductions as a result of the implementation of low-cost uh, automation, not high-cost. So what does this mean for leadership? We started with a beautiful show, and uh, the intention today is to use some art, as you've seen. Uh, we have two very talented artists from Salapakorn University who are producing artwork behind us, really as a medium towards the message. Two pieces of art, two things to think about, two contributions from psychologists to the modern world, from the ancient world, this is a depiction of who? Of Narcissus. Some of our perspective on leadership success and failure, and we were just discussing this, is considering the role of personality. Someone like me, I, my, my, my profession, my, my life's work has been about exploring personality in the workplace and how it predicts job performance in every job all the way through to talented, uh, high-potential leaders and managers. People are the same wherever you go, by the way. But Narcissus teaches us a lesson from the past, that if we become too absorbed around self, self-presentation, charisma, these things can get in the way of leadership. I, I think the modern metaphor is you don't fall in love with the reflection from the river, you fall in love with the selfie, and then you drown. A second piece of art. Do you recognize the artist? Anyone recognize this artist? There's a prize. We've got lots of prizes today. We've got a prize draw at the end of today, actually. This is Bruegel, who painted in the 1500s, in, uh, you know, a Flemish Dutch painter. I love Bruegel's work. Why? Because it's very real. And Bruegel was one of the first artists to paint real life, so we can see a depiction of uh, somebody, you know, a laborer here, just taking a bit of a break with their dog, someone working here, plowing the fields, you know, everyday lives. Can you see part of the picture, maybe from a distance, what's going on bottom right? Maybe this is the low performance, high potential zone. There's someone falling into the sea here. This is Icarus. And this is a Bruegel's depiction of the fall of Icarus. And what happened to Icarus? It was less about him, it was more about the environment. So Icarus's father, Daedalus, made him fail, didn't set him up to succeed. You can see feathers flying, uh, you know, escaping the island of Crete, escaping the Minotaur, uh, but not coached and not mentored. Well, high potential fails and falls into the sea. Why? Because he didn't follow the limited guidance he was given around avoiding the sun so that these wax and feathers didn't float off. So my belief is that organizations and the environment sets up leaders to fail. Negative message to start. Yes, we're in the middle of a positive psychology revolution, which is counterintuitive to what's really going on in the world. We've had 10 years, a decade, of downturn. It affects this country and many, so that uh, organizations, when they're considering the talent that they need, have to consider wisely and carefully what they really need. The right person for the right role to avoid, avoid the failure of Icarus. Today's agenda you have in front of you, I'd encourage you to enjoy the day and participate. We'll have some participation opportunities. I'm not going to go through our speaker. It's individually, we'll introduce each in turn. But we have a question panel 
at the end of the afternoon, which is aiming to be interactive and thought-provoking. And then an exciting prize draw at the end of the day. I encourage you. The rules in Thailand, if you're not here for the prize draw, you don't get the prizes. Okay, I think that's the way it works here. So uh, um, you're very welcome. Enjoy the day. It's time out for you as well as, as busy people to consider some of these important topics. And as I say, it intends to be uh, thought-provoking. Um, it is my honor and delight, uh, indeed, to introduce our um, guest of honor to in, uh, inaugurate our event today. His Excellency Kun Kwon Dabaransi needs no introduction in Thailand, so my introduction is for the wider audience. Uh, he was the former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand. He graduated from the University of Massachusetts in the United States, and he started his political career in 1974. He was appointed as Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand three times on three occasions, and he headed six ministries, including the Ministry of Industry, Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Public Health, the Ministry of Science and Technology, the, and he was Minister of Sports and Minister of Energy. So here is a gentleman who has the widest portfolio of experience possible. Kun Korn uh, was a former, in, ad in ad addition to his uh, political career, he has dedicated his life to sport and to a specific sport of badminton. Um, so the former president of the International Badminton Federation, and he's currently the chairman of the Sino-Thai Fellowship Association. He's a famous politician and social activist, and Kun Kwon has been active in the international arena in which he made important contributions to both st uh, peace and stability in Eastern and South, uh, Southern Asia, uh, res earning respect uh, from world leaders. Please join in me in welcoming our guest of honor to inaugurate our event, His Excellency Kun Kwon Dabaransi.